Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today I'm joined by David Beach, CEO of Basilea. Hello, David. Hi, Sue. So you've had an eventful year, which really unfolded the way you had set out for it to be. Maybe it makes sense to recount your refocus strategy and the key drivers that led to the recent increase in 2023 guidance. Yeah, thanks. I mean, 2022 was a really uh, transitional year, but pivotal year, I think, for Basilea. In February 2022, we announced our, our refocus strategy. Pr prior to February 2022, we were an anti-infective and oncology company. And then post-February 2022, we had uh, stated that we would be an anti-infective focused company going forward. And for us, that's antibacterials and antifungals. And uh, essentially, during the course of 2022, we therefore made progress in the anti-effective arena with our two assets, Crescemba and Zeftira, uh, predominantly. And then also uh, in terms of the oncology assets that we had in our pipeline, we basically transacted on them. So in terms of uh, your answer, your question, in terms of how did we do by, by the end of the year versus our guidance and why was it above, it was for a number of factors. One, the revenues for Crescemba and Zeftira were very strong. Two, we transacted on our, on our oncology transactions, which contributed to our revenues, our other revenue line. And then three, we reduced our expenses more quickly than we uh, thought we would, predominantly related to the uh, oncology transactions and the oncology assets. So, so they were probably the three key drivers to why the, the P&L was better than we had originally guided for. That's great. So... With the positive phase re results for Zevterra in bloodstream infection, what's next, right? I mean, maybe walk us through the anticipated timeline and the key milestones. Yeah, I, I think probably with Zevterra, the key thing to probably state up front is looking at other MRSA active antibiotics. The US is the critical market. We believe it's 80 to 90% of the potential globally for Zevterra. Uh, is is the US market. So A, it's very, very important. In terms of, yes, the results of the studies have all been great and very positive. And so now we begin the process of uh, the regulatory process. And, and what our plan is, is to uh, submit in this March, April timeframe, the NDA uh, to the US FDA. And then uh, if all goes according to plan, it's a, first of all, it's a priority review with the QIDP designation. So we have a total sort of eight month cycle so we would expect a decision, a regulatory decision uh, around the year end. And then probably the only other important point to just stress in terms of a high level is that our model has been to successfully partner the commercial uh, commercialization of our assets, Crescemba and Zeftira. And we, we are doing, planning to do exactly the same for Zeftira in the US. So we're currently discussing with potential suitable candidates for the commercialization of Zeftira in the US and obviously an announcement, another key milestone will be an announcement of our partnership before the regulatory decision uh, for Zeftira uh, this year for Zeftira in the US. So the, the key near-term aim will likely be refilling the development pipeline. What criteria will you be looking for for potential targets for in-licensing? Yeah, so actually, so our, our key priorities, I think you could probably say now for the coming for 2023 and beyond, are continuing to drive our revenues, which we have a long, we believe, revenue runway with Crescemba and Zotera, but you're spot on with your question that in addition, you know, uh, ultimately one day the, the, the sales of those uh, products will start to decline. And so we are actively looking to, uh, to populate our clinical stage and late preclinical stage uh, pipeline with antibacterial and antifungal assets. In terms of what do we look for or the approach we take very much we look for the fact that the compound we're looking to in license has to be differentiated uh, versus existing modalities in the respective markets in the antifungal and antibacterial markets so one is one point is very strongly around differentiation we, we it needs to be a differentiated product then we look at things like the clinical development pathway uh, is it is it realistic? Is there a way to market quickly? Maybe uh, get in there with sort of higher risk in the development, but higher rewards in the commercialization at the end. Uh, and then that brings me to the final element, which is we it needs to have a commercial 
uh, potential. It needs to really make sense commercially. You know, you can have an interesting asset, but if it doesn't make sense commercially, it's just an interesting asset. And so for us, you know, the NPV of the asset needs to make sense. And probably what's worth just stressing is, you know, there's lots of talk about incentives, you know, new pull incentives or push incentives for anti antibiotics in particular. But actually, we do our analysis based on excluding any new new incentives. So as of today, does the NPV make sense? And if it, if it makes sense, then that's key for us uh, in terms of a key criteria moving forward. It's sort of icing on the cake if if there are, we can attract non-dilutive funding or, or whatever in terms of additional incentives going forward. What key catalysts should investors look for in the next 12 to 18 months? I think the key catalysts from Basilea are really in three areas. One is the continued revenue growth driven by Cosemba, where we're launching in new countries like Japan. China is really just getting going. But, you know, the total revenue, which is driven by Cosemba, that continued progress and, you know, reporting of things like milestones is indicative of that progress. That's one thing I think people should look at. Secondly, this whole Zeftira NDA submission process, whereby we can potentially access at the year end this most important market for Zeftira. That's so the progress of that, the NDA submission, the uh, the partnering process, and then the regulatory decision uh, towards the year end. There'd be key milestones, and then finally, I think activity around supplementing the existing pipeline with new assets. You know, particularly clinical stage assets, but also uh, pre late preclinical assets. That will probably be the third area I, I would look out for. Thank you, David, for taking time here to help understand your company. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Basilea, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you. Okay.